let's talk about breathing, something we truly cannot live without. First, we need to understand the basic anatomy of the respiratory system. We have our nose that's connected to our pharynx, that's connected to our larynx. This is collectively referred to as the upper respiratory tract. Our larynx is connected to our trachea, that's connected to our bronchi. In our lungs, our bronchi split into bronchioles, split into alveoli, which are tiny air sacs where our red blood cells pick up the oxygen that we breathe in. This is collectively referred to as the lower respiratory tract. Around the lungs, there's a double-layered membrane called the pleura. The inner visceral pleura lies directly on top of our lung tissue, while the outer parietal pleura lines the thoracic wall and the upper face of the diaphragm, which is a big muscle that lies underneath the lungs. Between these pleural layers lies the pleural cavity, which is filled with pleural fluid. Breathing is really just applied fluid mechanics. Different parts of our thorax have different pressures, and it's this difference in pressures that underlies breathing. Normal atmospheric pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. When we describe the pressures in the thorax, we always give numbers in relation to this figure. So if I say that the respiratory pressure in an area is say negative four millimeters of mercury, it means that the area has an absolute pressure that's four millimeters of mercury lower than 760 millimeters of mercury. So in other words, 756 millimeters of mercury. The intrapulmonary pressure is the pressure in the alveoli of the lungs and will rise and fall during the different phases of breathing, but it always wants to equalize with atmospheric pressure. The intrapleural pressure is the pressure in the pleural cavity. Intrapleural pressure will also vary with the different phases of breathing, but is always about 4 millimeters of mercury less than the intrapulmonary pressure. The intrapleural pressure is negative due to the interaction between three naturally occurring forces. Number one, the lung's tendency to recoil and assume the smallest size possible. Number two, the surface tension of alveolar fluid, which draws alveoli into the smallest dimensions possible. And number three, the chest wall's tendency to pull the thorax outward and expand the lungs, opposing the first two forces. It's important to note that none of these forces really win over each other because there's very strong adhesion between the two layers of the pleura. In other words, they're really stuck together thanks to the surface tension in the pleural fluid. It's the combination of these forces, their push and pull, that generates the negative intrapleural pressure. The transpulmonary pressure is the difference between the intrapulmonary pressure and the intrapleural pressure. It's this pressure that determines the size of the lungs. The larger it is, the larger the lungs. If the transpulmonary pressure is zero, that is, if the intrapulmonary and intrapleural pressures equalize, this would immediately cause the lung to collapse, which, you know, would make it really hard to breathe. When we breathe in, our diaphragm contracts from its dome shape into a flatter shape and moves downwards. The muscles in between our ribs also contract and lift the entire rib cage upwards and outwards. These muscle contractions are enough to increase the chest volume by almost half a liter. The rise in chest volume causes a decrease in intrapulmonary pressure. Suddenly, atmospheric pressure is greater than the intrapulmonary pressure, and air, like any other fluid, will flow from high to low pressure, so air flows into the lungs. Inspiration ends when these pressures equalize. When we breathe out, our diaphragm relaxes back into its dome shape and the muscles between our ribs also relax. The chest volume decreases, which increases the intrapulmonary pressure. Suddenly, intrapulmonary pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure, so air flows out of the lungs. Expiration ends when these pressures equalize. And that's how we breathe.